Today we're going to be identifying the individual families that are on the periodic table. I will let you know right now that you are going to need to pause the video when I show you the periodic table so that you can get all of the colors in and then we'll talk about each family's characteristics and stuff like that that you need to know after we look at the periodic table. But so we have a blank periodic table here that has some space for each color identifier for what individual family it is. Here we have the alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, transition metals. Here in this stair step, we have our metalloids, we have our halogens, and we have our noble gases. These are going to be the main families. Some of these others uh, that I didn't individually point out are going to be the ones that uh, don't super matter in terms of family characteristics. And we're going to go ahead and talk about each family's characteristics. So we're going to be making a table and that table is going to have a total of uh, four columns. We have family, number of valence electrons. Remember VE is shorthand for valence electrons. We have each family's characteristics and then we have each family's charge. So the first family that we are going to talk about is our alkali metals. Notice that I have it the same color as uh, from the table. So my alkali metals are the metals that are in that very first column. They are in group 1A, so they have one valence electron. Alkali metals, things that you need to know about them are that they are extremely reactive. And because of how reactive they are, they are never found in nature by themselves. Another thing to know is that since they have one valence electron and that is very far away from the optimal eight, they are going to elect to donate one electron, which means that they are going to have a charge of plus one because giving a gift is a nice thing to do. My next family that we're gonna talk about are going to be my alkaline earth metals. My alkaline earth metals are in column two, so they have two valence electrons. My alkaline earth metals are very reactive, which means that they are slightly less reactive than my alkali metals, and they are also shiny and silvery. They have two valence electrons, which is still too far away from that optimal eight, so they are also going to have a charge of plus two after they give away two valence electrons. Next, we have our transition metals. This is a very loose family here. My transition metals are in this central block right there. They also only have two valence electrons, but unlike my, alkali, uh, my alkaline earth metals, their charge is not just uh, the positive version of their valence electrons, okay? Their uh, charge is going to vary based off of their situation and what they're going to be dealing with individually. So we're gonna go ahead and just label that as varies. Transition metals are going to be the metals that you tend to think of when you think of a metal. So these are going to be your gold, your coppers, your silvers. Those all live in that transition metal block. So they have the traditional medical metal characteristics of uh, electrical conductivity as well as having a high melting and boiling point. Next family that we'll discuss are going to be our halogens. These are our first non-metals and that is going to be in column seven. Since they are in column seven, they have seven valence electrons. My halogens are extremely reactive, just like my alkali metals and just like my alkali metals, they are also never found unbonded in nature, okay? So they have the exact opposite charge of my alkali metals because they have seven valence electrons and they want eight. So they are one away, so they will steal one so that they can have eight valence electrons. And that brings us to our final uh, family and that is going to be our noble gases. Our noble gases are in column eight. So with the exception of helium, they have uh, eight valence electrons. My noble gases are all extremely non-reactive. 
and they are all also gases. Okay, that non-reactive part means that even if someone comes up and tries to steal an electron from them, they are going to do their best to not give up any electrons and do their best to not take any electrons. They don't want to deal with you. They're like, stay in your lane. Don't talk to me. Okay, and since they do not take or give away any electrons, they do not have a charge.